My friends at B&H were nice enough to send me Sony's new massive 61 megapixel A7R 4 camera to give it a try. And if you're looking for like a camera review where a guy sits at a desk and takes pictures of charts and then pixel peeps, you're not gonna find that here. I actually take the stuff out into the real world. So I'm gonna take this camera out and do what I like to do, which is photographing birds. And let's see if this camera can actually handle that kind of stuff. Come on, let's go. I arrive at my favorite spot just before sunrise. What can I say? I was a little excited to try Sony's 61 megapixel camera. And if this shot is any indication of the typical results, then I'm in for a real treat. By the way, this was shot in crop mode at 400 millimeters, one one sixtieth of a second handheld. One benefit of having such a small lightweight camera, but let's move on and see what we can find. As luck would have it, the weather was awful. A tropical storm just off the coast has the ocean a little on the angry side and the light is pretty much non-existent. Throw in the occasional tropical downpour and you have some of the worst shooting conditions you could ever ask for. But that doesn't stop the birds from feeding and I'm ready to see what they want for breakfast. We have some brown pelicans flying over crashing waves, reddish egrets foraging for fish in the foamy surf, wood storks contemplating their featherless heads, and of course there are plenty of osprey sailing high in the sky. Regardless of the weather, it's going to be a fun time and it isn't long until I get a preview of what the day is going to be like as this beautiful osprey comes sailing in with a massive mullet held tight in its talons. All of this, and it isn't even 8 in the morning. It's going to be a good day. We just need the rain to stop, and we need some better light. It never hurts to ask, because the rain has now subsided, and that light is trying to punch through the clouds as I spot the first osprey coming out of the water with a fish. And this fish is massive. And talk about challenging shooting conditions. There's a slight drizzle in the air, there's no light, and the bird decides to fly right at me. This combination of horrible conditions has me wondering if I should even be out here. But if I wasn't, I'd be missing these amazing birds plucking fish from the ocean. Plus, if the weather does change, we might get some better light. And speaking of light, here's a great example of just how important light is. The previous shots were all backlit. The light was coming from behind the bird. Luckily, the bird turned and flew in a direction where it was lit more directly, giving us another example. Even though the light is somewhat weak and flat, being direct makes a huge difference on the subject. And regardless of the angle of light, this looks like one happy bird and one very sad fish. One of the amazing things about this location is the amount of osprey that show up when the fish are running through. At times, the birds seem limitless with appetites to match. So I decide to stand directly in their flight path and catch them as they come flying over with fish. In this first series of images, I switched the A7R4 to crop mode to see how it handles the smaller files, and they look incredible. But these birds are coming so close that I might clip their wings. Thankfully, I've programmed a single button to toggle between full frame and crop mode, so I'm back to full frame with just a press of a button as the next bird comes flying in with a nice catch. And right behind this bird is yet another, and this osprey makes some killer eye contact. That is one powerful stare. I think this bird wants to keep the fish to itself. I can't complain about having a nice steady stream of birds flying in with fish, but this one looks like it's carrying a piece of fried chicken in its talons. Let's have a closer look at that. 61 megapixels will let us do that. Ah, now I can see what this is. It's a sand covered puffer fish. I didn't think that Osprey liked to eat fried chicken. Finally, the clouds have cleared. Let's head down to the beach and see what we can capture in some good light. Sometimes you just have to stop and appreciate the smaller things. In this instance, a ready turnstone. These birds are small. They're about the size of their average human foot. And being able to see them in so much high resolution detail is simply breathtaking. And like pretty much all birds, this little bird is a great hunter. Can you see its prey right there in the sand? There it is. That's awesome. I back out of this tiny world for a second as a shadow falls over the beach and up in the sky is a beautiful osprey. It gives me a nice approving glance as it heads out to sea in search of food. I'll get back to that bird in just a minute. First, let's check out the detail this camera is capable of on a beautiful white morph reddish egret. For all those photographers out there who say we don't need more megapixels, I highly disagree. 
I've never had the pleasure of being able to see this much detail on one of my favorite birds. You can actually see tiny pieces of shell on this bird's beak and each individual strand of feather. And who could pass up that eye? You can almost see into this bird's soul. Yeah, this camera is pretty amazing. Let's give it another try on some flying osprey in good light. Ah, this is a great sign. Lots of birds, clearing skies, and here comes an osprey back from its trip offshore. Nice catch for this bird, a big hearty mullet. And right behind that osprey comes another with yet another amazing fish. It's pretty obvious to see why these birds like to congregate here. They have plenty of food. Now that we've seen what the A7R4 can do in terms of detail, let's put its autofocus to the test by shooting a nice long series of one bird flying quickly through the sky. We have plenty of them here, so we might as well make use of it. And here comes one now, and it has a huge fish. I mean, look at the size of the fish compared to the bird. I bet you the fish weighs almost the same as the bird. I still don't know how these birds do this, but man, what an amazing creature and a perfect test subject for the autofocus. I'll save you the trouble of counting the images here, but you can go ahead and do it if you want. This is a series of bursts that consists of 26 frames, and guess what? Not one of them was out of focus. And I say series of bursts because of how I was shooting this camera. I would fire off five or six frames at a time because I was cautious of filling the camera's buffer, which never actually happened. I was shooting short controlled bursts because it makes it a little easier to keep the bird in the center of the frame. The A7R4 does have EVF blackout, but it's very, very minimal. And from my short experience with the camera, I didn't see any EVF lag at all, which is just so helpful. Not only am I extremely impressed with the incredible amount of detail this camera captures, but the AF system is right up there with Sony's flagship super speedy camera, the A9, which is impressive. I, I didn't think it would happen, but apparently Sony, they squeezed some kind of magic into this camera. Wow. It's a great time to be a photographer. <laughs> it didn't take long to fall in love with this camera. I simply love it. And I'm going to be calling my buddy at B&H and placing an order for it. It's going to stay here and become part of my regular shooting stuff. And they actually did a lot to this camera more than just the 61 megapixel stuff. They actually changed the ergonomics. Here, let me show you. The biggest change are the buttons. They now stick out a little bit. They're really easy to feel and find when you're looking through the viewfinder. And the joystick is now recessed a little bit and it's got this great grip on it. They've also added a much needed lock to the exposure compensation dial. You just press it in and then you can move the dial around and you press it back in to lock it. No more accidentally hitting that with your leg or your arm while you're carrying the camera around. They've also made the grip bigger and deeper. So now you, you, know, you actually have something to hold on to. It doesn't feel like you're going to drop the camera. Another thing that really surprised me on the A7R4 is the actual color that it uses or that it renders the images. A lot of people have like, they voiced their opinion on some of the earlier Sony cameras, the color being a little different. I'm happy to say the color on the A7R4 uh, is just beautiful. It actually looks very close, if not the same as my D850, which is saying a lot because that camera is beautiful in every sense of the word. Um, this camera is really perfect for me and what I do. I, I love everything about it. I love the high res. I can zoom in really close on the birds and see some detail that I've never been able to see before. I definitely can't see with my own eyes. And I can shoot video with just the touch of a button. And of course, the autofocus is just incredible. Yeah, this camera really works well for everything that I do. And that's why I've decided to keep it. I know a lot of people are going to ask this question because they already have on Instagram. Why did I choose to use the 100 to 400 on the A7R4? Look at this tiny little thing. You can hold it with one hand. That's kind of funny. Instead of my 200 to 600. Um, well, I did use the 200 to 600. But my 100 to 400 seemed to be rendering everything a little bit better than my copy of the 200 to 600. Uh, I just was more happy with the overall images. This is still a really good lens, but my copy of this seems to be doing and performing a little bit better on the A7R4. And being that this is a new camera, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of questions. Go ahead and leave the questions in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. Might even make a good choice for a video if you just pile me up with questions and then I can actually make kind of a frequently asked questions on this camera, at least with my limited experience, um, and maybe make a video to educate everybody on that stuff. Um, as always, I got more videos coming up that probably show up over here. Um, let me know what you thought overall in the comments below too. Don't forget to click the like button and subscribe if you haven't done that. And check out my other videos. Some people have told me they're kind of entertaining, so you might want to do that. And until next time, I'll see you later.